nice if, if ads were actually blocked by your ad blocker. Wouldn't that be great? <sighs> Hello. Um, so this can be a very low effort video where I rank my, uh, my rankings, where I rank my rankings of every Star Trek TV show. Why am I doing this? Um, because Lower Decks has been cancelled. Lower Decks has been cancelled and it's bullshit and I'm feeling a lot of ways about it and I thought I maybe would calm down after a few days from hearing the news but I haven't yet and I'm sad and I'm dealing with that sadness by making a, a silly tier ranking list. So let's just, let's just get into it. I have made my tier rankings. So our highest tier, our S tier, is to go the boldest. We are, it goes the boldest. It is the boldest of the going. You know what I mean. A tier then is Pomfire Night at the Vulcan Nightclub. So this is a show that's not quite S tier. But it's got the camp, it's got the fun and the joy and all of the stuff that you want from your Star Trek show. After that, we've got Live Long and Prosper. Live Long and Prosper, I think, speaks for itself. Like, it's really good, but it's, it's you know, it maybe lacks a little bit of the joy, a little bit of the silliness. Maybe it's a bit more serious. Um, and I feel like this is not an unpopular opinion. Star Trek's supposed to be silly and it's supposed to be camp and it is at its worst when it forgets that. Next, we have Worf's terrible parenting. Well, you know, you get some entertaining storylines out of it, but it's just, it's not the best and it's not something you want to spend a lot of time with. And then obviously, worst of the worst, we have the murder of Tuvix. And then at the bottom, we're, let's get these ones out of the way. The ones I haven't finished yet are... Enterprise and Prodigy. Oh, and I have not watched every single episode of uh, the animated series. I have watched a good bit, but I haven't completely finished it. So they're going down there. I don't feel like I can have a full opinion on them, even though I do have opinions. But because I haven't watched them completely, I feel like it's not fair to, for me to rank them. So they're just gonna live down there. We're gonna go through these shows in chronological order of release. So obviously that means we start with the original series. And listen, it probably should go in It Goes the Boldest. But I am saving that for a specific show. That category is for a specific show. So we're gonna put the original series in Ponfire Night at the Vulcan Nightclub. The original series is obviously the original Star Trek series. It sets up all the stuff we love. It is very dated in certain ways now, um, but there's still so much to love in it. Even though there are things in it that I really don't like, there are, there are far more that I really, really do love and that are important and that set up really cool stuff for the franchise down the line. And Leonard Nimoy Spock. It, like, I love Spock as a character. I love every portrayal of Spock that we've gotten from the various different actors. I think they're all great in their own unique ways. But nobody will ever be better than Leonard Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy is Spock, down to his very bones. Next, we have The Next Generation. And that is going right beside the original series in Ponfire Night. The... The Next Generation is the first Star Trek I ever watched. One of my earliest memories of watching TV is like sitting in a dark room in front of the TV and that opening starting, the those little notes, the planets. And I mean, you look at the opening of, of Next Gen now and it, it, you know, it's not the best computer graphics in the world, but as a child, it was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. I was like, oh my god, these are like actual planets and we're zooming through the rings of Saturn and then the music starts, you've got Patrick Stewart's voice, so, like it's just the most magical thing and, and that is such a clear memory in my head of this magical experience of like watching Next Gen on TV. So... That's incredible. And it's also so stupid. <laughs> it's so stupid. That's something that the original series and TNG really share is like they embrace the camp. They embrace 
the really, really stupid stuff in Star Trek. There's a lot of that. We get weird costumes. We get, you know, space ghosts. It's just, it's it's everything you want. It's It's quintessential Star Trek. When you think of Star Trek, you think of Next Gen and the original series. Next, we have Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Go straight into it goes the boldest. It goes the boldest. Frankly, I think that's because it was ahead of its time in so many ways. It was ahead of its time in the fact that it was highly serialized. Up until that point, Star Trek had been really episodic, um, which in, in some ways is great, for some kinds of stories is great, but it also, I think, is detrimental to... Ser when we talk about Voyager, that show should not have been episodic. That if, if any show should have been serialized, it should have been Voyager, and they didn't do it. But DS9 is such a complex show. It has so much to say politically and spiritually. It's so well written. The characters, I think they are the most nuanced characters we get, certainly until you get into the, the modern Star Trek shows. I may at some point make a whole video about why DS9 is amazing. Um, but for now, I think it just, it, it goes the boldest. It's the boldest that goes. It's so good. Next, we have Star Trek Voyager. I am very much torn if it's going in Live Long and Prosper or if it's going in Worf's terrible parenting. I am gonna put it in Live Long and Prosper because there, there is, I think, probably more good than bad in it. It's just that the bad is so glaringly obviously bad. So if you want to talk about the positives first, Voyager has some really great characters. It has some interesting storylines. Not a lot of interesting storylines, but it does have some. Specifically with characters like Seven of Nine and the Doctor, who, who really get a lot of character growth. Um, their stories, particularly Seven's, I mean, we see Seven is such a beloved character. She has outlived Voyager as a show. So... Her, her character, while it's not always perfectly handled, is so complex and grows so much over her time on the show that a lot of that saves it for me. Voyager was also the first Star Trek series to give us a female lead. We get our Captain Janeway. <sighs> Listen, Janeway is a very nuanced character. I think Janeway, again... In, in a way that, like, DS9 was ahead of its time, Janeway as a character, I think, was ahead of her time in that she is an anti-hero. She is not our great... That could be said about Sisko to a certain extent. Sisko's not necessarily, like, morally ambiguous, but he is, like, quite angsty and he gets put in a lot of situations where his Starfleet ideals have to be put aside in order to do what is best in that particular situation. He can't always make the good choices that he would like to make. Sometimes he has to bend the rules in ways that make him uncomfortable. And we see that with Janeway as well. However, Janeway is a very morally ambiguous character and I think that's good I'm not against that I think in general we should have more female anti-heroes on tv we should have more you know leading roles for women where they do get to make the wrong choice and and you know we still care about them as an audience but they make villainous choices they make choices we don't agree with the problem with Voyager is that it like Janeway so consistently <laughs> makes such terrible decisions and yet it's not really addressed in the narrative. I mean, Murder of Tuva, if we were just talking about characters here, Janeway, bottom of the list, because she murdered Tuvix. She murdered Tuvix. I will never, ever get over the murder of Tuvix. Ever. If the story was more serialized, I think... Janeway's character would work a lot better for me, but because it's so episodic, Janeway just does something fucked up, and then we just don't deal with it. Then we just move on to the next adventure, and Janeway doing another fucked up thing. 
Voyager has such a strong premise and it just never really delivers on that premise and I think that's why why it it is low down for me because it disappoints me so much. After Voyager was Star Trek Enterprise, which I have not watched all the way through. I don't want to. I've been putting it off for so long. I know I need to. I need to give it a fair chance. I have seen enough episodes of it to know that it annoys me. But then I felt the same way about Voyager. And when I actually sat down and watched Voyager from beginning to end, I discovered that there was a lot that I actually liked in it. So I will have to do that with Enterprise eventually. I just haven't done it yet. After Enterprise's cancellation, there was a long, long stretch where we had no Star Trek at all. Those were the dark times. Those were bad times. Then the Kelvinverse movies came out, which I'm not going to do on these, this list because I don't want to. But in 2017, we get Star Trek Discovery! And the first season is not necessarily great. I think upon rewatch, there is some stuff to like in it. But after... After series one, we get into series two and the rest of the show, that goes straight to Live Long and Prosper. The only reason that it is not in uh, Ponfire Night at the Vulcan Nightclub is that I think Discovery's biggest flaw for me is that it does have a tendency to take itself a little bit too seriously. They have improved on that as the show has gone on, and I think as it's gone on, it's gotten better and better. But Discovery almost has the opposite problem to Voyager, whereas Voyager would have been better if it was more serialized. I think Discovery would be better if it was a little bit more episodic. If we got episodes which were just kind of the characters messing around and bonding, if we would just give up on like the big universe ending plot for a little bit and let the characters just be characters, have character-centric stories, and we do get those for certain characters. But I want to see more of the br bridge crew. I have been saying this since series two. I didn't bother saying it in series one because I just didn't really like series one. But since series two, I was like, oh, we're getting a little bit more of the crew's personalities. Are we going to build on that? No. And it just, we've gotten bits and pieces, but I don't feel like we have ever fully gotten enough of those characters and the fact that it's cancelled now really upsets me because I just I feel like Discovery was getting better and better with each new season and the fact that it has kind of been cancelled they didn't even get a chance to like write a final season as the final season um is is depressing it's upsetting I think Discovery had so much potential still has so much potential and the fact that that potential has kind of been cut off at the knees makes me sad um but i am excited for star trek academy and to see more tilly so yeah i i really love discovery but i can only really put it in live long and prosper next we have star trek picard Another show that was such a massive disappointment. It is going in Worf's terrible parenting. Picard is a weird one because it's a weird show, but also it's such a different show from season to season. Season one and season three are not the same show, in my opinion. And series two, it was best just not to talk about series two because series two is just an absolute fucking mess. It, I, I don't, I can't even... I, I can't even comprehend what happened to series two because they set up these cool things at the end of series one and for like the first episode or two of series two, you're like, oh, this is actually pretty good. And then it's just nonsense. It's just nonsense from beginning to end. And you're like, why is any of this happening? What's going on? Why are, why am I here? What's happening? Um, and then you get to series three and you're like, are they going to correct anything from series two no we're just gonna do a completely different show now for a season and the show it, that it is in season three i like i do like it i have issues with parts of it but overall i think is pretty good but it's just such a mess of a show that despite the characters that i really love despite the amazing performances and there are amazing performances throughout despite the parts of the plot that i really really love and that i would love to see more of it has to go in Worf's terrible parenting because 
Like, if you think about Worf as a father, he means well, and I think he's probably doing his best. It's just that his best is so bad. Um, and I think the same could be said for Picard, unfortunately. Now, we get to my beloved, who has just been, like, cut down in its prime. I can't cope with it. Lower Decks is going straight to Ponfire Night at the Vulcan Nightclub. Lower Decks is, to me, such a perfect encapsulation of what is great about Star Trek. It is weird and funny and bizarre and like shamelessly optimistic about the world and the future and and people and you you really see that played out in the characters like it's it's got such good character writing i think actually of all modern star trek the best character writing we see is actually in lower decks the four lead characters change so much from the first season up until you know where we are currently and I'm sure we'll continue to grow and change more in the final season. I'm so bitter about I can't think about it too much because I will get too angry. But if you look at a, a character like Mariner, Mariner starts out so cynical, so jaded. This is someone who has lived through the Dominion War, who has been absolutely shattered by it, whose every ideal and, and dream of, of what Starfleet is and what it means to be a Starfleet officer has been absolutely shattered. Um, much the same way that, like, as audiences, after you watch DS9 and, and see some of the other darker shows and moments in Star Trek, you, you do get jaded towards the ideals of, of what Star Trek is supposed to be about, what Starfleet is supposed to be about, this, like, utopian future that is the vision of what Star Trek is supposed to be about really does get lost. And so I think it's so wonderful to see a character that kind of personifies that. And as the series goes on, have that character rediscover their, their joy in exploring the universe, rediscover their love of what Star Trek and what Starfleet is meant to be. I think that's, that's really cool and it's really interesting. It makes it such a good show. It's also so funny. I just, I, I can't, I can't express anymore how much I love Lower Decks. Obviously it's not as good as DS9 because nothing is as good as DS9 because DS9 is the best that Star Trek has ever been. But in my mind, Lower Decks is right up there with quintessential Star Trek, like with the original series, with TNG. Lower Decks belongs right up there with them. And finally, we have Strange New Worlds. I love Strange New Worlds. Strange New Worlds is absolutely delightful and I struggle. I think I think it's in Live Long and Prosper. I do think it's in Live Long and Prosper. Just looking at this now, I have not put anything in the murder of Tuvix. I haven't put a single thing in the murder of Tuvix. Nothing's that bad. <laughs> Nothing's bad. I mean, listen, judging just by the episodes that I have personally seen so far, I would put Enterprise in there. Um, but like I said, I feel like it's not fair to, to put that in there when I haven't seen it from beginning to end. Although, is it fair then to have Voyager in there? You know what? I am going to move Voyager down to Worf's terrible parenting because I think it's more of a level with Picard than it is on the level with Strange New Worlds and Discovery. Yeah, I'm go I'm moving it down. It's living down here now. It's it's Worf's terrible parenting, I think. Really captures Voyager and Picard. But Strange New Worlds is wonderful. It is very, very close to being in Panfire Nightclub. I think the only thing that kind of brings it down a little bit is that it's just not gay enough. It's such a kick in the teeth that they confirmed season four of Strange New Worlds, like in the same breath as they cancelled Lower Decks. I feel like that was such a shitty move on their part. And I think it was supposed to lessen the blow of Lower Decks, but all it does is detract from like the joy. We should be able to be excited that season f we're getting at least two more seasons of, of Strange New Worlds, where season three is coming out in 2025, and then we know that they're getting a fourth season after that. 
we should be able to celebrate that, but we can't because all we can focus on is the fact that Lower Decks has been murdered. This video is going to be such chaotic nonsense. I don't even know if I'm going to post it. We'll see. Let me know in the comments whether or not I posted this video. I'm just sad. I'm really sad about Lower Decks. I'm, I'm really truly like I'm sad about it. Fingers crossed it will get picked up by a different streaming service. I'm not holding my breath about it, frankly. But then, you know, Prodigy got picked up and I don't think Prodigy is anywhere near as good as Lower Decks. Again, I have not seen all of Prodigy. I've seen enough to know that it's not particularly for me. Um, but I, I will give it another chance at some point and like sit down and watch it properly. But if Prodigy can get saved, I, it makes me a little bit more hopeful that Lower Decks can get saved because Lower Decks, I feel like, is a much more popular show than Prodigy is. But I just don't know. I don't want to get my hopes up. I really don't want to get my hopes up. Anyway, that's, that's it. That's, I, I've talked, I've talked enough. I, those are my rankings. Hey. It's all fun. It's all fun. <laughs> Lower decks. Whoa.